Now crochet shin arrows, wasn't that just amazing? <laughs> And now for our final piece, we have um, Ireland's Call, which is going to be played by the children on Tin Whistle and um, our Bowrons as well, which is also a national instrument of Ireland. Gorabila Margaret Illig, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed our, our little taste, maybe, of, of what happens in a modern school. Um, it's only a flavour of it. It's, it's a very busy place and a very active place, uh, but we're blessed to have such wonderful children that have. And I, and I hope you also got a flavour of how difficult it is to control some of the mothers in the place as well. But girls, that was, that was fantastic. Thank you very much for that. So we, we, are, we are under... As I explained to you at the start, there's two elements to this little celebration today. Um, a large part of it is obviously the awarding of the second green flag. And we'll hope, we'll hope that we hope to hoist that now um, shortly. But another very important part of it is which why our European visitors are here is for the Live City project. And we have a school in Tremor, sorry, a school in Passage East and in County Watford first was waiting for us at 11.30 and we're only slightly late. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take my visitors and friends here up to the room for the demonstration. Um, and then when that's over, we'll pull you all back together again and we will go outside to, uh, to hoist the green flag. Is that fair enough for everybody? And in the, in the meantime, um, all you people need to go back and work in class, work very hard. And the mammies and daddies are going to have some of those nice cakes and buns that are outside. Is that fair? And there's just a little bag there. Can I have that little bag for a second? A uh, couple of things I want to do. I, I'm not going to spend long because we're under pressure to do this. But outside, uh, th there's a couple of people that I just want to, uh, I want to recognize their presence. Um, First of all, uh, or we're delighted to have and honour to have our MEP, Mairead McGuinness, who joined us today for the second time. Mairead is delighted to be here as a friend. Um, I just want to give you a little token here. I just want to explain what it is to, to, to uh, our friends as well. I um, thought it was most appropriate. There's a man down here who I know will be very happy because it came all the way from Donegal. 
Um, there's no point trying to explain that to you because you'd never understand them. The accent is crazy up there. You wouldn't understand it. But this is two little boys who, des who developed a little cottage industry of their own by turning wood out of a hobby. And the hobby became, they became very good at it. They turned a little cottage industry and that was turned into an international industry. They sell handcrafted wood turned pens um, in native Irish timbers. So, Maria, I'd just like to give you, probably have one, but I'd like to give you another one. <laughs> And then, uh, just another person, Mr. Pereiro, uh, can I call you to the floor here as well? And just welcome you as the reviewer for the project. Thank you very much. Pleasure. And then, um, the guy who keeps all the people on, in the project on our toes, and that's my good friend, Ioannis, who came all the way from Athens. And, uh, Ioannis, I'd love to present you this little thing. Um, I'm just going to leave it at Johannes because they, uh, I couldn't pronounce his second name. It's, it's one of those hard ones. I can't do it. Uh, so if you just stay here for a second, nice and quietly, folks, um, I'm going to get these people up to the green room because we're under a little bit of pressure for that. Just want to thank you all for the work that you put in to this little performance today, our celebration. I want to thank all the teachers who have worked so hard with you. And I want to thank all the mums, dads, parents who are all behind the scenes doing bits and pieces that makes it possible. When we work together and pull together, incredible things are possible. And I hope that we'll continue to do incredible things in screen for the years that are ahead of us. Whoever is here, that's, that's an important part of it. Love to thank all the very talented musicians here. You've seen some native Irish instruments. Another, another great friend of the school, Carmel, over here, um, who, whenever the Musical has gone on, she's always there. It's fantastic. You might have seen the gospel influence. Um, there's a flower for you as well, Carmel. Don't worry about that. Uh, one of the most talented people that there is in the country, not just in the screen. Uh, Fiona Bryson on the harp here. There's, there's, All the work that went on outside. There's a, there's a fantastic green committee working around the school, driven on by Mrs. Grayson and by Mrs. Gerard, who have done incredible work. I think all the staff would agree with you on that. Um, I, I found Mrs. Grayson here late at night some nights when she shouldn't have been here, but she's still doing that. She <laughs> The grounds around the school look very good because they're very well catered for. We have a caretaker who he nearly killed himself the other day trying to put in holes for flagpoles outside the other day. Andrew, it's deeply appreciated. Thank you very much. So, look, I, I know there's a time delay between uh, Ireland and maybe the rest of Europe or most of the rest of Europe, but there isn't a time delay between here and Passage East, so they're waiting for us from 11.30, so we, we'll make moves for that one, okay? Thank you very much, folks. You guys stay here, and I'm going to bring my visitors away. So good morning, Passage East. Um, welcome to School Colin Kill Screen. We have third and fourth class ready to do a presentation. Um, good morning. Earlier... Earlier this year, we did a presentation on Van Gogh, so we've chosen another artist, Pablo Picasso. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. Welcome to School Column Kill Screen County Youth Learning. Third and fourth class would like to do a short presentation on the artist Pablo Picasso. In our last presentation, we learned about Vincent van Gogh, so this time we decided to do something completely different. His name is Pablo Picasso. These two men are polar opposites. Van Gogh was depressed while Picasso was happy. Van Gogh was lonely, but Picasso had many friends. Picasso was rich, and Van Gogh did not have as much money. My final difference is Picasso was very abstract, and Van Gogh had a strange shimmering technique that was. 
that made amazing paintings. People think Pablo Picasso was a strong name, but it wasn't. It was actually... and he cried. Picasso was born in Malaga, Spain in 1881. <coughs> His first word that he spoke was peas, but what he was trying to say was lapis, which is Spanish for pencil. The reason he said lapis was because he wanted to sketch a dove that was flying past. Picasso painted his first painting at the age of eight. The picador shows the bullfight. The bullfighting appeared in lots of his later work. Picasso had an illness called dyslexia which meant he couldn't read as well as other people because the words would get jumbled up on the page. In the time he lived, people didn't know about the illness, so he was often sent to detention. He loved it there because he would bring a sketch pad. <laughs> when he was 13, he was admitted to the School of Fine Arts in Barcelona. But when he turned to 16 years of age, his father and his uncle sent him to Madrid's Royal Academy of San Fernando. In 1900, Picasso moved to Paris. When he was so poor, he had to burn his own paintings for light and warmth. He met a man called Max Jacobs. He was a poet and a journalist. Max taught Picasso some French. He was then made famous when he illustrated books and art magazines. <laughs> in 1905 to 1906, Pablo Picasso was in his rose period. He was in his rose period because he was in love. Pablo loved women and got married twice. Rose period means he painted a lot of red and pink in his paintings. This is the painting of an acrobat in Terlequin, which was painted in his rose period. This is my rose period painting.
1908, Picasso and his friend George Braque invented a style of painting called Cubism. They were inspired by a painter called Paul Cezanne. The Picasso said he painted things as he thought, not as he saw. The people and objects were hard to pick out because they were because they were broken up and rearranged all over the page. This is my version of Heart of the Elbow. This is Guernica. Guernica was painted by Picasso. It was an anti-war painting about when the Germans bombed Spain. In the picture, there's a lot of emotion, destruction and panic. One day, two German soldiers walked into his studio and held up Guernica and said, Wow, you did this. Picasso said, no, you did this. This is our painting of Guernica. Our teacher drew it and we painted it. We, uh, we got this idea from another school's Live City presentation. Pablo? Pablo Picasso had a party of a life. He got married twice, had four kids, he went to parties all the time. He smoked round the clock. Everywhere he went, people followed him, the paparazzi especially. 